Welcome back to Shade Tree Cardiology, where today we're going to talk about the PE and how it presents on the ECG sometimes, okay? The first thing is, what is a PE? A PE is a pulmonary embolus. It's a blood clot in the lungs, okay? So when it's very life-threatening in a very short amount of time, we're talking about a very large blood clot, okay? And usually those are in the pulmonary artery. So this significantly reduces blood flow to anywhere by blocking it. And it creates a pretty significant cardiovascular strain. It can completely occlude blood flow in some cases, right? No blood equals no life. Pretty simple concept. It usually presents with a pretty specific history, all right? So some of the first things you need to know is the predisposing factors. If they have any sort of hypercoagulable states or clotting disorders, long periods of inactivity, such as after surgery or during long travel, any insults to the body, so trauma, surgical procedures, those types of things. Hormone use is also a big one, okay? We have a lot of people on testosterone, estrogen, birth control. Um, people with high cholesterol also have a, a big problem with it. Uh, deep vein thrombosis, so if you have those big blood clots in the back of your knee and the popliteal vein, that's another predisposing factor. Also smoking, okay? And then there are other factors, as there always are, okay, which are more specific and, and less common, and we won't get too far into those. So usually the history you see with these people is going to be pregnancy, smoking, uh, high cholesterol, right? Your hyperlipidemia, so high levels of fat in the blood, high levels of cholesterol itself. Long periods of inactivity, recent surgery. Paralysis is a huge one, okay? Think of how seldom those people move uh, some of their lower extremities and, in you know, some cases, upper extremities. Cancer is another one. IV drug abuse, lupus, phenothiazines, varicose veins are also one of the huge predisposing factors to a PE. And recent Coumadin use, okay? Because sometimes there's a yo-yo effect and it, it messing with the clotting factors in the body. I'm not going to go specifically into that. Inflammatory bowel disease can also play a role in this. So how does the PE present? When we get called for someone who's having a PE, what do they show us? They show us shortness of breath, a sharp chest pain, okay? Pleuritic chest pain. And... Um, <clears throat> Shortness of breath again, okay, because it's just that common. That is usually the, the key thing that these people complain of. However, our key physical finding in PE should be hypoxia. And this is one of the things I see paramedics and interns forget all the time. Hypoxia is a huge part of a massive PE. Your patient should have poor O2 saturations. So what we typically think of as the classic presentation of PE is a little bit wrong. We've all ran that scenario or that board where we say, uh, the person was driving in the car, they smoked, they take birth control, they got out to pump gas, and bam, the PE hit, right? Uh, that's not always the case, okay? Most of the sudden deaths from PE are reported to have complained of nagging signs and symptoms, some chest pain, some shortness of breath the week before, okay? 40% had seen a physician in the previous weeks. So what are your ECG changes in PE? If you want to confirm this diagnosis, right, because you've got chest pain and shortness of breath, how do you rule that out? How do you say, hey, this is probably a PE? Well, three out of 10 PEs are going to present with a specific ECG finding, okay? It's called S1Q3T3. If you want to read more about it, core pulmonal is the actual name of this uh, syndrome you see on the ECG. It presents with a prominent S wave in lead one, a prominent Q wave in lead three, and an inverted T wave in lead three. So let me explain what I mean. If you look here at lead one, you see a huge S wave. Look at its size in reference to the height of the QRS. All right, now look down at lead three. You can clearly see uh, a huge Q wave there. Excuse me, in uh, lead one, I was talking about an S wave. <clears throat> in lead three, you can see a huge Q wave there. And then take a look at the inverted T waves that you'll see in lead three. So this is a clear example of the pulmonary embolus. All right, so whenever your patient presents with the physical findings we discussed before and you see this, you've got a pretty good idea you're looking at a pulmonary embolus. However, don't just use your ECG findings to say this is a pulmonary embolus, all right? Put the whole package together. Remember, an ECG is a vital sign and nothing more.